In this short video I'll explain to you what will happen on the day of your test when you get called by your driver tester. You will go to your desk and then they will ask you for your learner permit or your provisional license to make sure it's valid. They will open it up to make sure first of all it's your photograph to make sure it relates to you. That is the correct category of car which is a B license for a car test. That you've held the license at least six months from the date of issue and your license hasn't expired or it's not out of date. After the driver tester has checked your license they'll ask you to read a few bullet points on a sheet of paper just to confirm that the car you're using for the test is roadworthy. That's covered with appropriate tax, insurance and NCT if it's over four years old. So you must sign and date this and give it back to the tester because if you don't, the driving test will not go ahead. After you've confirmed that your vehicle is roadworthy, the tester will ask you some questions on the rules of the road. If you get a question wrong, you will get a grade one fault on the driving test sheet. So after they've asked you some questions on the rules of the road, they will ask you some road signs as well. They may ask you anything up to about 16 road signs. So once the driver tester has asked you your signs and questions, you will then go out to your car to do the next section of your driving test, which is the mechanical check. So before you can open up the bonnet of the car, we have to open what we call the safety catch. It's normally positioned right under the badge of the car in a straight line. So it's just right here. So just going to raise it with my left hand and bring up the bonnet with my right hand. Then you pop it open here. When you open the bonnet of the car, the driver tester will ask you some simple questions about different fluids under the bonnet. I'm just going to cover all you need to know in this section for the driving test, without getting too technical. So the driver tester will ask you to point out the brake fluid. This is the brake fluid here in this car, with the yellow cap on the left corner. The brake fluid in any car, depending on the make and model, will be positioned anywhere along the back of the car. If you're not quite sure, just check your manual. So we're going to look at the engine coolant now. This is the engine coolant. It's got two levels on it, a minimax level. The engine coolant is always going to be bigger than the brake fluid. Beside it we have the water for the windscreen, or what's called the screen wash. You should always make sure there's water in there to make sure that you can clear your window if you can't see the road ahead. The driver tester will ask you how to check the oil level of the car or where would you pour the oil if you need to top it up. In this car you pour in here. To check the oil level of the car you need to mention the car first of all should be on a flat road. It shouldn't be parked on a hill or on a curb like this. And you let the engine cool down for about 10 or 15 minutes. So the engine should be cold. So once the car is on a flat road and the engine is cold, you just point to the dipstick. This is the dipstick here in this car. The dipstick could be yellow or orange, but it's blue in this car. You don't have to touch it. You just mention the driver tester that you need to pull out the dipstick. You wipe it with a cloth. You re-dip it back in here. And then you pull it back out to check the level it should be between the min and max level. So I'm just going to show you very quickly how to do that in this car. So you pull out the dipstick. You'd wipe it here with a tissue. You dip it back in where you took it out, so you don't dip it in the oil. And then you pull it back out again, and it should be between the two levels, the min and max level. If the oil doesn't reach the min level, you need to top up your oil. At the end of the mechanical check, the driver tester will ask you to drop the bonnet. So to drop the bonnet of the car, you can just let it drop from here. It tends to be quite loud. Or else just bring it down and press it in all the way so that it clicks in properly and the bonnet is correctly closed. After the mechanical check or the tyre check, the driver tester, no matter how bad the weather, must check your indicators and brake lights are working correctly for health and safety reasons. If one of the indicators, or at least two out of three of your brake lights doesn't work, the driving test will not be conducted. So we're going to look at that for you now. So now I'm just going to show you that my indicators are working correctly, so I'm going to indicate right. But then you'll be asked to indicate to the left, The easiest and best way of checking the indicators are working correctly is by turning on the hazard warning lights. This will turn on all of the indicators at the same time, so you can check them yourself if they're all working correctly. The driver tester will also check your brake lights as well, so he'll ask you to put your foot on your brake when he's behind you. As you can see, all of my brake lights are working correctly. I've got three brake lights in this car, one on either side and one in the middle. If one of the brake lights on either side doesn't work, the driving test will not be conducted. Before you do your driving test, the driver tester will make sure you have L plates on the front and the back of the car. This is the front of the car. The L plate is positioned inside the windscreen on the passenger side, well away from the driver's side view. The L plate at the back of the car should be positioned where it doesn't block the driver's view. It's important to mention that if your back window is anyway tinted or very dark, the driver tester will require you to place the L plate on the outside of the window rather than the inside to make it visible to other traffic from behind. Next, the driver tester will check your discs to make sure they are valid. The tax disc must be valid because it must relate to the make, model and registration number of the car. Beside that we have the insurance disc, the driver tester will make sure that the insurance is valid 
it's in date and it matches the registration number of your car. Please note that if your vehicle is over four years old, you must also display a valid NCT disc.